If you're looking to start or build out your smart home, then you've probably wondered who has the better smart voice assistant. Is it Amazon or Google? I had the same question when I started, so I decided to deep dive into both ecosystems. In this video, I'll explain the similarities and differences between these two, and in the end, I'll let you know what I went with. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, let's jump right in and talk about these two ecosystems. First thing you need to know is that Amazon and Google do not play nice with each other. Years ago, Amazon refused to sell Google products on Amazon.com, so Google retaliated and pulled support off of Amazon products. This feud also bled into smart home products, Amazon owning the Ring brand and Google owning the Nest brand. Because of this, you cannot view Ring on Google displays, and in return, you cannot view Nest cameras on Echo displays. Recently, relationships have been mending between these two companies, and you are now able to view Nest cameras on your Amazon displays. But for some reason, you still can't view Ring cameras on Google devices at this time. Another thing to keep in mind with blending ecosystems is that even though you can view Nest cameras on Amazon devices, the features are going to be somewhat limited. You can view the live view, but you're not gonna have the feature of two-way talk. So keep in mind what brand owns what. Google is going to own Nest products and Chromecast, where Amazon has their Echo and Fire TV lines in addition to owning Ring, Blink, and now iRobot. Now when it comes to Ring and Nest security brands, Ring is gonna have a lot more device options with cameras, video doorbells, security systems, and smart light bulbs. Also, they have a dedicated Ring app that has a great layout. Google, on the other hand, has less camera options, but the quality is going to be better. They also include 24 seven recording for up to 10 days on their Nest Aware Plus plan, where Ring does not offer 24-7 recording. Now, the biggest downside with Nest cameras is that you're gonna have to use the Google Home app to manage your cameras, and that has been proven to be kind of buggy. When it comes to streaming devices, Amazon has Fire TV and Google has the Chromecast. Now, these devices can be their own comparison video, so I'll just say that out of the two devices, I prefer the Google Chromecast. The menu is much faster to navigate through, and I like the voice search that Google offers. If you want to see a dedicated video of those two devices compared, let me know in the comments. Now, I have heard the biggest factor when choosing an ecosystem is if you have an Android phone. You can use the built-in Google Assistant to control your smart home. Since I'm an iPhone user, this doesn't apply to me. Now, the last thing that I wanted to touch on is privacy. While neither one of these ecosystems is very private, I think Amazon is gonna be a little bit more invasive than Google. If you want more details, I did a full video on seven features that you should be turning off on your Echo devices. I will leave a link for that at the end of this video. I highly recommend that you guys check that one out. Also, if this video has been helpful, I would love for you guys to give it a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that this is a helpful video and it recommends it for more people. It would also be great for you guys to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos like this one. And with that said, let's continue. Routines are what you're gonna to use to automate things in your house. This can be triggered through schedules, smart home devices, and voice commands to name a few. Well, actually for Google, voice commands is where it starts and stops. Stops. Yes, unfortunately at this time, the only way to trigger Google routines is through voice commands. But the cool thing about their voice commands is you can use several different phrases to control one routine. For example, you can trigger a dinner time routine with different phrases like, it's dinner time, it's time to eat, come down for dinner. And this way everyone in the house doesn't have to remember the exact phrase they need to use. Amazon on the other hand has a robust automation ecosystem. They allow you to use smart home devices to trigger your automations. For example, when I walk into a room at night, I can have a motion sensor turn the lights on. Other possibilities are announcing when the front door is open and if it's at nighttime, it can turn the porch lights on. Also, you can set up an automation to open up the garage door when you get home. Now you can incorporate more complex automations into the Google ecosystem with the addition of a hub like SmartThings or Hubitat. I'll have links in the description below if you guys want to check that out. When it comes to the sound quality of the entry level devices, they both sound pretty similar. But with the Echo Dot fourth generation's new design of angling that speaker to point more into the room, it's gonna give Echo the slight edge. The Google Nest Mini has a cleaner buttonless look with indicator lights in the middle. You can tap on the sides to adjust the volume and there is a physical switch to mute the device. The new Echo Dot fourth generation has a spherical design with four buttons on top and an indicator light on the bottom that reflects off the surface, making it brighter and easier to see. The Echo device also has a three and a half millimeter jack to connect to external 
external audio like a sound system. But if you're looking for better audio out of these two systems, they both can connect to an external Bluetooth speaker. Another thing to keep in mind too is that with both of these ecosystems right here, they do offer bigger, better speakers with voice assistance built in. But as expected, both of those are gonna come at more of a premium price. When it comes to smart displays, Amazon has a lot more device options and sizes. But for me, when it comes to day-to-day -day use, the Google display blows the Amazon displays out of the water. Both can be used as digital picture frames, but Amazon likes to insert their own stuff into the mix. Some of it can be helpful like reminders, calendar events, weather, but then I get other things that are popping up like daily insights of celebrity quotes, places to explore like restaurants, and random trivia questions. And I hate to even say it, but sponsored ads. Yes, I did have this pop up for me. It came up with a sponsored ad. I tried to swipe it away. It would not let me do that. It kept the ad on there until however much time went by before it finally moved on. So do keep that in mind with Amazon. They are testing out having sponsored ads on their Amazon devices. Now, when it comes to controlling your smart home through the displays, Google is going to have a lot more features and easier to navigate through the menu. Scrolling down from the top will immediately bring you into home control. You can select your smart home category or other features from the tabs on the top. With Amazon, you do have similar smart home options, but the interface is slow and can be frustrating at times. The features of products are gonna be different between the two ecosystems too. For example, Philips Hue colored light bulbs. If we take a look here, this is the exact same light bulb in both ecosystems. On the Google display, I have the option of turning the light on and off, adjusting the brightness and the colors. But in the Amazon ecosystem, I only have the option of turning it on and off and adjusting the brightness. I have no option for changing the colors with that exact same light bulb, which to me is a big disadvantage. Okay, so let's talk about some extra features. In the Amazon app, you are going to have the option for an energy dashboard. This is gonna take your compatible smart home devices and put them into this energy dashboard for you to monitor how much energy is being used. We've also got features like Alexa Guard. So when you leave your house, you can turn this feature on and it'll monitor your house for any suspicious activity. Another cool thing you could do in the Amazon ecosystem is you can change your wake word. There are several different options of wake words that you can use to communicate with your device. You can also change the voice that is being used. Now, you can do that with the Google ecosystem too. You can change that voice, but unfortunately, as of right now, you cannot change the wake word for your Google ecosystem. Some extra features that you can do with Google that you can't do with Amazon is you can schedule future tasks. And what I mean by that is you can say, turn off a light in 30 minutes or brew coffee at 8 a.m. Another option is turn on my porch light for one hour. Those are all things that you can set through the voice commands and things that you're not able to do through Amazon. If you request any of that through Amazon, it will do that function right away and not wait the desired time that you asked for. Another cool thing that you can do in the Google ecosystem is you can control your music on different devices at different levels. So if I wanna play music throughout the house, I can go through and decide what devices are gonna be playing music and I can adjust the volume differently for each devices. I will have a master control on the top, but if I want it to be a little bit quieter in one room and maybe a little bit louder in the other room, I can do all of that in the Google Home app. All right, so who is better? I'd say that if your primary focus is high-end security cameras, smart displays, streaming content, and a little bit better privacy, I would recommend Google Nest. Remember that you can always add a SmartThings hub for more robust automations. If you're more interested in an ecosystem that's just gonna be really easy to use, kinda has everything combined into one neat little package, and has lots of smart home device options, then the Amazon Alexa is going to be a good choice for you. Now, what do I use? Personally, I use a mixed environment. I mostly use Amazon devices around my house to control my smart home, but hands down, by far, my favorite smart home device is the Google Nest Display. I love the digital picture frame and how easy it is to control my smart home with the addition of the streaming services. If you guys wanna know more about that product, I did a dedicated video that you can check out right here. Right above that is going to be seven features you're gonna to wanna to turn off on your Echo device. If this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you like it and I'll see you in the next one.